All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 11th day of January, of January, the 11th day of June in the year of our Lord, in the year 2022. And welcome to a world gone mad. Gone absolutely bonkers. Isn't the Congress still going on about January 6th? It's, it's always blame everyone else. In fact, I heard this morning uh, in second hand that one of the news stories out there is Biden is blaming Putin, uh, calling uh, the inflation and everything else. Not Biden's fault. The Putin tax. The Putin tax. Everything's Putin. And now this is nothing new with the Democrats. They've been doing this for years. In fact, uh, you can go back to, well, Eisenhower sort of warned us about the uh, military-industrial congressional complex. You know, if there's anything that needs to be investigated in the United States today, it is not the January 6th protest, because that's all it was. There's been things much more. It was a protest. It wasn't a war. It wasn't an invasion. It wasn't a bunch of rioters. It was a protest. We've seen that. I mean, the Antifa has caused much more destruction in Washington, D.C. in the previous couple of years. There was no big congressional hearing about that. Of course, Antifa didn't just went after the White House and Trump. They'd go after the Congress. But <clears throat> Nancy Pelosi, they were all in favor of it. Well, you know, so that this is, it's always somebody else. And this is, uh, this dates back to the beginning of humanity, to the fall in the garden. Adam. Adam. And the Bible is very clear. It lays the blame on Adam, not on Eve. And when Adam, when God confronted Adam in the garden in the beginning after he had sinned, remember what he said? God said, Adam, what have you done? And Adam said, that woman made me do it. That woman that you gave me. So the first thing that Adam does is rather take responsibility for his act. He blames God and Eve. And humanity's been doing that ever since. Blaming others for what they've done. Little children, very small children, blame, blame others. Their brothers, their sisters, the boogeyman. Whatever they can think of. It's never their own responsibility. For a person to take responsibility is difficult. They want to avoid the consequences. And so Biden, rather than being a leader and a statesman, he is the lowest of the low. He goes, It's just a descendant of Adam. So he is not a Christian in any sense of the word. <laughs> And he just continues, and he, he claims to be the you know the, this leader. And rather than lead, he blames others for all his disasters. But I find it very interesting because what we have going on today is is I think is is the, the Jesus talked about the the wheat and the tares, and the tares they grow together, and you can't really tell wheat and tares apart because they, they, they look the same. They're grasses. Just like corns of grass. But wheat and tares, in fact, a lot of grains, barley, oats, and they all look alike. But tares is a weed. Around in the United States, um, we have something called foxtail. That's a weed. Uh, it's, it's a grass. But uh, they look looks very much like weed until the head forms. So, But tares even more so. 
And tares are weeds. They're not usable. They're not food. They're not good. They're just weeds. But you can't really tell them apart from wheat, or, or what you say in Europe, uh, maize. Or, no, excuse me. Uh, let's see, what do they call it over there? Corn. So you call uh, what we call wheat, corn here, you call that's wheat in the, in the rest of the world, or in Europe at least. Uh, here, uh, they call corn maize over there. Here, corn is corn, maize, and wheat is corn in the rest of the world. Uh, anyway, the, the, the tares and the wheat, or slash corn, look very similar until the head appears and it begins to develop the grain. Well, wheat develops grain, tares don't. They have seeds, but it's nothing usable. And uh, that's what's happening. Jesus said in this parable that they both grow together until the end of the age. And then, then the uh, his angels will gather together the tares, and they'll be burned with fire, and then the wheat be gathered into the Lord's barn, saved. Because that's what God wants at the harvest. The, God created humanity for his own pleasure, for his own purposes, for fellowship with God. And Jesus Christ was sent to undo the disaster that Adam did. So, anyway, we're, we're coming to the end of the age, and the wheat and the tares are now evident. <laughs> yes, they are. And I, I, it reminded me of a passage. But until I... I, I want to get to something else first, and it, it has to do with the stuff that's going on in this world right now. Uh, and we see what what appears to be insanity and uh, psychopathic or sociopathic activity among the leaders in the west what used to be called christendom or part of christendom the western world uh, that was basically overthrown in the revolution that began in the united states the, the christian west was overthrown by the united states and all the copycat revolutions you know, you get the American Revolution, the French Revolution, which are really doozy there. What did, what did France become? It became unreligious. It became anti-Christian, anti-Christ explicitly. Uh, it was really, well, we have a timeline that's sort of revealed in the book of Revelation. You have the, uh, the Babylon the Great. And that looks an awful lot like Christendom, the old Christendom that used to exist, but then it became very commercialized. But then beginning with America, you had the overthrow of the Christian aspect of it, the, the established church that goes back to Constantine, uh, basically the, the government church system that goes back to Constantine, and uh, that were the civil church. This Christianity is a civil religion, uh, but uh, under the force of law and someone to restore that, not a good idea. The only uh, thing is that atheism is worse. Uh, and But we're seeing it all come to a head now. And so Amer America was the beginning, I believe, of the, uh, the what's called the beast in the Bible. Because America... Uh, John Locke, uh, anti, it was really an anti-Christian revolution. Even though it was against the state church, it was also against the scriptures because scriptures prevent, uh, prohibit the act of the revolutionaries taking up arms to overthrow the government. It's prohibited by the Bible. Now, Americans don't want to hear that, but it's true. And... So, you know, a real Christian could never have taken part with the, with the revolutionaries against the British king. If they had to fight on one side or the other, it would have been with the Brits, which were the lawful government. But there was a lot of people that, that wanted to get rid of them because there was a lot of money to be made if the British government could be done away with. Uh, the country was full of, uh, what do you call them, uh, not... Buccaneers, uh, 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 people that uh, illegal trade 
<clears throat> smugglers. Smugglers. They didn't want the British government regulating their business interests. And they wanted to steal the land from the Native Americans, which they proceeded to do once the British were out of the way. Because <sighs> the British uh, king regarded the American Indians in, in the uh, British territories as his subjects also. The colonists didn't. Other than historically a few uh, colonies, like you had William Rogers and William Penn, that, that generally treated the, the Native Americans as their equals, that didn't occur other places. So America does have a dark past. We have to realize that. Real, realize that America is not a Christian nation, never has been. It's part of the world, the world system. So is the establishment church. Really, because you look at people like Pope Francis, can you really say that that's uh, uh, the mediator of God? <laughs> He's an antichrist. He, he, uh, uh, the word antichristos, the Greek, the, the prefix anti, means instead of, but also against, but also means instead of, in the place of. So, the Pope takes the place of Christ, and Rome admits that. He's a, 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 a vicarious Christi, a substitute, one who takes the place of Christ. Don't need such a person. See, a person that's born again. Christ dwells in you. The Spirit of Christ is in you. You're in a direct relationship with Christ and the God the Father through Christ. You don't need a Pope. You don't need a bishop. You don't need a priest. You are a priest. Because you can intercede before God. The Pope can't. God doesn't listen to that dead old guy. Th those are enemies of Christ. And they, the, the whole system is, was corrupted. Satan corrupted it. And he ma managed to get the, the church into bed with the state. That was a mess. For over a thousand years, that was a terrible mess. Then the American Revolution came along, and, well, we'll get rid of that thing, and we'll replace it with nothing. A neutered God, if a God at all. A secular state. Of course, it'll be a small thing, just like the income tax. They promised when they passed the Constitutional Amendment back in, what was it, like 1913 or something like that, to to make income tax, uh, federal income tax, legal under the Constitution, because it wasn't. Um, they promised it would only be on the rich, and it would only be a small amount. They lie to the American citizens just as much as they lied to the Native Americans. If you don't know that, you don't see. Humanity, fallen humanity, blames everybody else, and lies, because Jesus uh, said to Pharisees, a group of Pharisees, uh, while Jesus was on earth, that were following him, but for the wrong reason. They were following him because they got a free meal. And Jesus said, uh, and then they started getting nasty with him because he's trying to shoo him away. And he said that you are of your father the devil, and the deeds of your father you will do. The, the devil was a liar from the beginning. And when he tells a lie, he speaks out of his own nature. He is a liar. There's no truth in him. And that's humanity, too. There's no truth. It's not just that Pharisees, but the descendants of Adam. That They are, by nature, liars. Just look at little children. You don't have to teach them to lie. They will lie. They'll blame their brothers and their sisters and the boogeyman and everything else they can think of. When they get caught, just like Adam blamed Eve and God when he got caught. And now we have a president that's manifesting that he too is a descendant of Adam and of his father the devil because he's, he, has, he can't do anything right. Everything turns to dirt as soon as they touch it. Not just, just Biden, and then Biden is unable to take responsibility for anything, just like Adam would not take responsibility. Strange. 
But uh, the uh, Psalm 37 is an interesting psalm. I think I've mentioned it before, but it's not the only psalm that, that mentions this. He talks about, I'll just go over there and we'll take a look at that. It's always a good thing to remind ourselves of Psalm 37 when we have to look at the insane things going on in this world. I mean, the, the, the governments, the Western governments have lost their minds. They're a bunch of sociopaths. The leaders, are all, almost all of them are nuts. So let's go over here. Do not fret. Do not... What, what would be the... Uh, trouble yourselves. Work yourselves into a state of anger because of evildoers. Those who do evil, practice evil. Nor be envious because of workers of iniquity. Workers of evil, wicked. For they shall soon be cut down like grass. Just mowed the grass the other day. And wither as the green herb. You know, it gets to be late in the summer and there's not much rain and a little drought. Things just dry up. Especially if they're not on deep, rich soil. They're on sandy, stony soil. They just dry up, turn brown, wither. Trust in the Lord and do good. Well, Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing, nothing good. You have to be born again. You can't do good otherwise. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Especially, he will put his desires in your heart. See, the problem is a lot of people want God to do for them what they want to do. Whereas you should want God to do for God what God wants you to do. You want him to put his desires in your heart, and then you'll do good. Because only God is good, as Jesus said. Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. So it's not something that you will bring to pass, it's God brings it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light. Now, the righteousness here is to, to be righteous is to be right with God. That's what righteousness is, what is right in God's sight. Or justice. Justice and righteousness are the same word, generally, in, in the original languages. And your justice as the noonday. See, uh, and here on Psalms, as it often does, justice and righteousness are synonyms. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for you. See, this is, this is really a psalm about faith, just like the New Testament. Salvation is by the grace of God through faith, through trust in God. Not faith as a work, not faith as something you do, but trusting in God that he'll do what he needs to do. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. He's coming back. Do not fret. Do not trouble yourself because of him who prospers in his way, the prosperity of the wicked. You know, like Bill Gates, all these, these olig American oligarchs, they talk about the Ukrainian oligarchs and Russian oligarchs. Well, Putin put a big crimp in the Russian oligarchs. He put a, put a bunch of dog collars on them all and chained them up. But to say, either behave yourself or you're going to lose it all. But here in America, we don't have enough sense to do that. Here, the oligarchs control everything. See, money controls politics. Politics runs, um, now runs on money. And who has all the money? They don't even bother using money sometimes now. They control media. I mean, it's just, just like, who was it? Was it uh, Bezos? Yeah, uh, the, the guy that used to run Amazon. I think he's maybe stepped somewhat aside from that. What did he do? He bought the Washington Post. That that's the pay, thing became nothing but a supermarket rag after he bought it. I remember uh, I subscribed to it shortly. It's about a year or two ago, and it was so bad I just canceled my subscription before it was even up. I said, "This is junk. It's just full of lies." It was, a it was worse than anything that ever came out of Moscow in the old days when I was a kid. I had a shortwave receiver, a ham radio receiver. I wasn't a ham, but I had a had the receiver. So the sh uh, a high-quality shortwave receiver, Hammerland HQ-180. 
And I used to listen sometimes. This was back when I was, oh, uh, 12, 13, 14 years old. Tune in to Radio Moscow, uh, to their English broadcasts. And sort of, you know, something, today it's nothing. You know, you just let's go anywhere in the world on the Internet. But back then, you know, you'd, and you'd realize that they were telling stories and stuff like that. But just like Ray, Voice of America, which I didn't know until recently, was actually a CIA operation. It was actually part of the CIA's uh, work. A voice, uh, Radio Free Europe, CIA operated. But uh, the uh, there was nothing I ever heard from them that was nearly as ridiculous as what I saw in the Washington Post. I don't even look at that stuff. I don't believe writers, junk. See, uh, the stuff's all being exposed. It's just like Trump seemed to bring a lot of exposition to stuff. Not that Trump is anything special. I mean, he's uh, uh, carnal. Um, I would not regard him as a uh, a, a holy man <laughs> that way. But, uh, you know, I don't know about his relationship with God other than he still manifests a lot of childishness. Uh, got a very big ego, which is sinful. So, and he still blames others, too. See, he's doing the same thing that Biden's doing, but not quite as crazy as Biden. But here, uh, so... Let's go on in Psalms uh, 37, because it's important here. Do not fret of him who prospers in his way because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Wicked schemes. Uh, people like, uh, 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 who is uh, the the big, uh, well, I just, the, the, the big shots in this world, the people that, that you, you see go to Davos. Uh, don't worry about them. <sighs> Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Every time I see the news, news, I get angry. So maybe I just... You know, sometimes just don't watch things that make you angry. Do not fret because it only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off. Be cut off is to die. Cut off from life. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Jesus, remember? See, this is a thousand years before Christ. And he said, the meek shall inherit the earth. See, meek does not mean weak, by the way. But the self-restrain, those who trust in God. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. Jesus is going to clean this place up when he returns. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and they shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked laughs at him. Excuse me. The wicked plots against the just. And gnashes at him with his teeth. See, just like Cain killed Abel because Abel did what was just and right in the sight of God and Cain didn't. So he killed his brother because his brother made him look bad. So it is in this world. Christians are persecuted and often killed because we're righteous, we're just, we, we believe in God, we love peace, we we work to do we, we hold to to what's right and generally seek to practice that not flawless flawlessly but uh, we trust in god and the world hates us just look in the united states today if you're a born-again christian you're hated because you've done evil no because you're good you're good and of course they they point to all kinds of these these phony charlatans that run these huge churches that make them millions and hundreds of millions of dollars like Joel Olstein and Kenneth Copeland and those shysters liars thieves preaching a false gospel that that uh, uh, satisfies the flesh 
it attracts sinners. It attracts people that aren't interested in following Christ. It tells them Christ wants to give them everything they want. They want. You know, so it's a religion of flesh, religion of Adam. And I wonder if the, how much of a dent they've had since uh, the uh, pandemic. There's a lot of their scamming is done on television or on the Internet anyway. Send in uh, send in $1,000 and God will give you a hundredfold return. Yeah. The Lord laughs at him. He sees that his day is coming. God knows the end of this. He's going to bring the end of this. The wicked have drawn the sword. They have bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy, to slay those who are of upright conduct. Uh, this applies to Ukraine, too. The government in Ukraine is wicked, immoral, godless. Why? In the, uh, the, you know, the, the, the president of Ukraine, Zelensky, is a, a is Jewish but an atheist, and he was sponsored by a Jewish atheistic oligarch. When I took a trip back over to Israel in the mid '80s, I was rather surprised to find out, you know, because uh, evangelical America, which I had become born again into, uh, has you know people like. Some of the preachers, they have a, an eschatology that's decidedly Jewish. Uh, as if, if God's, you know, unbiblical. Because God's, God has expanded his kingdom beyond Israel. The, the, uh, the people of Israel, you have to be in Christ to be in covenant with God. There's been a change of covenant. No one was saved under the old covenant. God extent, in Christ, God brought about the new covenant, which is open to all. And there's a lot of people that have a an idea that uh, God has different plans <laughs> than what the Bible says He has. But you know, what else is new? But anyway, I was rather surprised to find out that over half of Israel is secular. Half of the Jews in Israel which is like half of the Jewish population in the world that lives in Israel, the other, most of the rest of the, the population. The other half, not quite sure who has the most, lives in America. But most of Jews are secular. They're not, they don't, pr none of them practice the law of God, the Old Testament covenant. They don't. They might get circumcised. They might practice Passover and the Sabbath, but, they don't keep the law. They can't. They don't. But it, it's uh, why would a Orthodox country like Ukraine, Orthodox is in Christian Orthodoxy, for the most vast majority, elect a atheistic Jew actor that was sponsored and supported by a atheistic Jewish oligarch. And this is not a, tended to be a slam against Judaism in, uh, as a whole, or Jews as a whole, but rather the question is why would a, 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 a people that ha historically and currently generally uh, hold to a Christian orthodoxy, Eastern orthodoxy, why would they, or Russian Orthodoxy, until that double-dealing patriarch of Constantinople pulled a fast one? Oh, man, there's another. You know, those, all these people are all bums. Why would you elect someone like that? You're not seriously Christian. Just like there was no way I would vote for uh, Mitt Romney because he was a... A, uh, a Mormon, which is an anti-Christian. They're, they're completely different than Christianity. Mormonism is a system of anti-Christianity. It's a different Christ, different gods. Completely different system. Just uses some of the same language. Not Christianity at all. I would never vote for him.
No. It's like, wait a minute. Why would you want somebody that is ungodly to govern you? It's like, in a, if you, this country is really a, a Christian country, why don't we elect Christians? Because it's not a Christian country. That's why. Uh, Occam's razor, you know. That's the simplest explanation. It's not a Christian country. That's why we like people like Biden and Bush and Trump and Reagan. Yeah, I don't know. Reagan might have been one of the most Christian of any of them in recent history. Um, Carter, he demonstrated what he really was. He was nothing but a Southern Baptist. Unless you're a born-again Southern Baptist, you're not a Christian. You don't have to be a Southern Baptist to be a Christian, but you have to be born again, and there's not many of them in the Southern Baptists. Uh, because they they rely on the ways of men. They, they turn to programs instead of faith in God, which is full of programs. I know. I was there for a short while. They got a program for everything. Man's programs do not accomplish the will of God. God accomplishes the will of God. But it just seems ironic that here you've got a person that is that is taking Ukraine to destruction. And in my opinion is that Putin is actually saving Ukraine. He's liberating Ukraine from the West, from the evil. You know, why is America so... Why is the Democratic Party and those in control like Biden so desperate to, to save Ukraine from Russia for themselves? Well, that's the corruption honeypot there. The Biden family honeypot. Who knows? It, it, what we need is an investigation of Congress. Uh, we need an investigation of Washington, of w the corruption that is endemic there. You know, where do they get all this money? Money corrupts everything. The love of money is just the root of all kinds of evil. And Washington runs on money. Everything's about money. And more of it. Money and power. Money is just a form of power. What's interesting here is it's the whole Ukraine thing and this craziness. I mean... What Russia's done in Ukraine is much more just than what America did in in Korea, in Vietnam, in uh, uh, all the adventures in Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, in Syria and Afghanistan and all these other things. What Russia's done there was really to to save a good chunk of Ukraine of uh, Ukrainian people from slaughter by the uh, the ban ban Bandera rights that hold to a certain ideology that's more related to the uh, the crooked cross than anything else. You know, when Putin said talked about de uh, denazification, I wonder what he's talking about. Well, I had to do a little research and I found out. But why is Biden so intent and Europe so intent? You know, NATO is just the Americans' uh, empire, part of the American empire. Why are they so intent on on, on bringing Ukraine or that? Because it's 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 a huge slush fund and center of corruption, and everybody's getting their cut. It's just like the Russians uncovering all those drug labs the Pentagon was operating. Turns out there's like 42 of them or something. The Pentagon admitted it, but they're all for good. So when does the, when does the Pentagon operate drug labs for good? Aren't they in the business of killing people? Department of Defense, that's some more uh, Orwellian language. It used to be called the Department of War. Now it's called the Department of Defense. Yeah. George Orwell was right. But what's happening? What's happening? So Putin launches a preemptive... You know, he put the... If you remember back to last year, he put the uh, some Russian troops on the border. They knew what Ukraine was up to. They've been, the United States arranged a coup in 2014. 
The United States was very busy around the world start setting off coups. Remember, the, there was the, the so-called green revolutions, the color revolutions. Uh, you have, of course, you can go all the way back to Mosaddegh and the Shah of Iran in 1956, was it? Uh, or something like that. Uh, CIA uh, coup. Tur and then was it 2014 or 2016 that the CIA attempted a coup in Turkey? Now, you wouldn't find out any of this stuff from the American media because they're all controlled. You know, it'd be interesting an investigation also, not only in Congress, of Congress, but about uh, corporate ties to the military-industrial complex, which incur includes uh, 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 the, the, the congressional funding, def all the defense-related industries, uh, the CIA, the NSA, the, the national security state. Now, it, and their black budget. That should all be opened up for all the world to see, the black budget. You need to bring some light into Washington. You think they're going to do it? Of course not. Because they've all, they are all partakers in the crimes. I'm concerned with some people like uh, uh, Mrs. Miller, who's in Congress right now, I believe, and some others, because they go there, Christians, with with right motives but i think they'll either leave very quickly because they'll find out they they are relegated to to uh, a position where they can't accomplish anything or they'll become corrupted uh it'd be very difficult to uh, or they 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 silence their christian testimony too that's a very hostile corrosive environment and there, there's no way to fix it because uh, the, the very foundations of democracy and uh, Republican government is flawed in a sinful world because it assumes that people d doesn't uh, proper uh, doesn't understand the the, the the fall of human nature sufficiently and then when when people have to fund get money to run and to win and everything else man there's no way there's no way you're going to win unless you're corrupt, unless you're on the take, unless you've been bought. Because nobody's going to give you their money. Not normally. You have to be really rare. should all be investigated. It will be when Christ returns. He knows where all the skeletons are buried. Yeah, they're going to all be exposed. That's what's interesting in the Ukrainian thing. What's happened? So the United States uh, and, and Europe, which is the same entity, basically, because we've got troops all over. We've got how many? 500 bases around this world? We've got troops in most of the nations in the world. These countries would be well do well to kick us out because we're dangerous. Like, like Erdogan found out in Turkey. He knows it was in a CIA operation. <clears throat> Why do you think he's not terribly cooperative? <laughs> yeah, and it's just like he's he's uh, sabotaging the uh, the Sweden and Finland joining NATO. He's a see Turkey is the second strongest country in NATO. What what the Brits, the French? What are they? Well, Britain has one little aircraft carrier to try to pretend there's still something. And uh, the French, well, who knows <laughs> what they are. They're nothing. And then they got the Germans. America runs the whole show. Dangerous. America's dangerous. We're seeing that right now. And you're all being lied to. But what, what does the word of God say about these things? The wicked, verse 14 here, the wicked have drawn the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy, to slay those who are of upright content, a conduct. Their sword shall enter their own heart. Their, their bow shall be broken. 
A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. See, all you that think that be, you'd like to be Bill Gates and and uh, Bazos and everything else. No, if you got if you got uh, food and, and shelter and you know the Lord, you got a whole lot more than any of these people have. The arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. Look what happened. Biden arranged he was going they were going to smash Russia. Remember? They were going to make the ruble into rubble. They are going to put these sanctions on and just, without having to use military force, just destroy Russia. They, they aim their arrows, their sanctioned arrows. Doesn't that sort of remind you of the book of Revelation where no one can buy or sell unless he has a name or the number of the beast? Huh. But what happens, what's happening right now, in spite of what Biden blames on everybody else, Biden's done it. America's done it. Europe's done it. The collective West has done it. They've shot themselves. Their own sanctioned arrows. I mean, these people have been given over to reprobate minds. Romans chapter 1, the end of chapter 1. This is what happens. Worthless minds. Minds that don't function. You wonder, why? this doesn't make any sense. Well, they're under the judgment of God. America's under the judgment of God. Europe's under the judgment of God because America and Europe has forgotten God. And Australia, all these countries that used to be the West are now the stupid, the insane, the sociopaths. Look at the school shootings. It's all part of it. That stuff didn't happen when I was young. Of course, we did have riots. But I remember America has gone which was never truly Christian, has gone really bad and is now a threat to the world. But what's, what God says here, their sword shall enter their own heart. So who are these sanctions getting? Why is gas up 50%? Why is food in the grocery store up 50%? They talk about 8% inflation. That's a bunch of nonsense. You know that. I know that. Just look what's going on. They've been playing with those numbers for years and years and years to make them look better than they are. They, 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 my dad was an accountant. He would just hate what they're doing because they, they fudge the numbers. They, I, I remember when they, they started including the military in the employment figures. Why? Because it inflated the, the number of, of jobs and everybody in the, in the military is employed. You're never unemployed in the military. It was to, to dilute the, the number, the unemployment number, to make it look better than it really was. They've been playing those games for years. That's just what they do. That's just what the descendants of Adam do. They don't want the truth. They don't love the truth. They love lies. Deception. Hollywood. Hollywood's nothing but a lie. The whole thing is a lie. Did you know in the ancient world, in Rome, in Greece, actors were held in low esteem? Oh, they were popular, but they weren't respected. They weren't respectable people. They were like prostitutes or slaves. They weren't, they weren't re regarded as respectable people. Why? Because they weren't they were they were they were do they were living lies they were pretending to be what they weren't in fact the greek the word we get hypocrite comes uh, from the greek the greek word that that we get uh, hypocrites a transliteration of it is uh it means actor of course we use the word as what somebody who is pretending to be something they're not that's what an actor or actress is and what do we do? You look at Hollywood, daytime TV, the, the, uh, the, the what is it? What do they call themselves? The, the, the crew or whatever, of these Hollywood women that sit around pontificating about things. Well, in ancient the ancient world, they would have been considered basically prostitutes. <laughs> well, there is a Hollywood casting couch. Yeah, that's the world all over the place. All kinds of things. 
politicians, what are they? How are they different? They sell themselves for money. As one of the younger congressmen revealed, that you have to buy committee seats, and the lobbyists provide the funds yeah, for certain support, of course. There's nothing in writing, of course, because it's criminal. It's just a system of organized crime, corruption. Yikes. But it's God's word is being fulfilled because the very act of Biden and the West in their sanctions, with the kind of gimmicks they've been pulling for a year, resulting in the death of, of hundreds of millions. I mean, well, how many children, I might have got that number a little wrong, how many children died in Iraq under uh, Albright and the sanctions that they imposed on Iraq? Uh, and it didn't affect Saddam Hussein, but many, there was several million children died of starvation, disease, American sanctions. And Albright said, when she asked whether it was worth it, she said, yeah, I think so. Well, she's dead now. I don't think she thinks so anymore. Because God doesn't play those games. And he holds those people to account. But it's interesting. The sanctions that are supposed to have turned uh, Russia into rubble uh, has entered the heart of who? America, Europe, Australia. Who's suffering? Not the Russians. The Russians have been liberated. See, they finally understood what the West does. And they're like, well, we're not going to play games with you anymore. See, Russia can survive on their own. They did it for under communism for 70 years, sanctioned by the West. They're better off on their own. Now they realize it. God save Russia. Protect them. I pray for that they have a true revival among the Orthodox. Understand biblical Christianity. Be born again. Spiritual revival from God. But at least they're turning back in that direction as opposed to the West, which is going more and more in the way of Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, actually, I think we've suppressed Sodom and Gomorrah. There's things that are going on today in the United States and Europe that I don't, the Bible didn't even, you know, wasn't even part of what was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. <sighs> uh, the, the word uh, that's used, abomination, tova, uh, one of the words in the Old Testament, Hebrew, it means confusion. Confused. People that are confused about what they're supposed to do with things. Also, the scripture says that that uh, the fear of the Lord in Proverbs is the beginning of wisdom. You wonder why these government leaders and everything else are insane? They have no wisdom. You know, the idea that, that you can punish Russia by cutting yourself off from all the things that Russia produces... That's punishing Russia. It shows that, you see, your, your, your mind isn't functioning properly. You have no wisdom. See, knowledge is not of any use without wisdom. Wisdom is what's important. Knowing what to do and why and understanding and doing what is right in the sight of God. Without God, there is no wisdom. So people that have rejected God, there's no possibility of wisdom for them because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of it. So that the what the United States and the and Biden, uh, Biden and Blinken and Nolan, Nolan and well, no, who Nolan, whatever the the people, the neocons and the neoliberals. A conspiracy to get their honeypot of Ukraine back. Uh, <clears throat> they were afraid that by, that Putin would expose all their dirty deals, probably. Huh. Just like their secret 
bio labs why weren't we told if they were you know why do you hide what's actually done for good you never do people don't hide their good they hide their evil secret labs are evil labs secret prisons are evil prisons things done in secrecy are evil otherwise they wouldn't be in secret most of what's classified in the government it's not because to keep it from the technical details from the enemy. No, no. It's to hide it from the voters. Oh, yeah. Like the, the overseas secret prisons, the black site prisons the CIA was operating under Bush after 9-11. And the things they were doing why was it overseas or why was it in Cuba? Because they wouldn't want it in America where it would be under the scrutiny of others and be openly seen. If you don't want your deeds seen, it's because they're wicked. Is that not true? Maybe I better drop my volume a little bit there. But the actions of the United States and West, the, uh, the uh, collective West, against Russia and China or whatever, all these sanctions things, it's coming back to bite them. Already, the humiliation of Biden going and kowtowing to uh, the, the Saudis who he despises and kowtowing to Iran. Oh, please, please, we need oil. Why? Because I cut it all off. And, and going to Venezuela. The United States have been trying to overthrow Venezuela for how long? Uh, sanctions, sanctions, sanctions. Well, we'll lift sanctions on you if you just start pumping the oil. Do Americans even care? No, it's a judgment of God, though. It's, it's, their sword, their plans, their, their schemes to destroy what they were planning for others has entered their own hearts. Their own nations. They have no wisdom because of God's judgment on them. Because they have rejected God. They have rejected what's right. They have rejected justice. All these people out there in the world, in the streets of America, crying for justice. They don't practice justice. They demand for themselves whatever they want. That's their idea of justice. I get what I want, and if it belongs to you, I get it. But you got no right to demand it of me. Yeah, that's what they call justice in America nowadays. Selfishness. <laughs> yeah, they always justify their sin. Anyway, what I wanted to, uh, talking about the insanity in this world, uh, it was, I was also thinking again about Second Thessalonians chapter 2, where it talks about the revelation of the man of sin. And let me, uh, we don't need that in that form there. there. Talking about the coming of the day of the Lord. Now, there's an awful lot of signs that, that Christ has to return because he, he said he'd return to prevent the destruction of humanity. That unless he had cut those days short, no one would be saved. And that's not Jerusalem in 70 AD. That was just a little local thing. But here, let, let me, I'm going to read it again. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Now, I'm, I've got to go up because I've got to remind people especially those that have been reared with the King James. Uh, and I want to show the King James Version. It says, the King James Version says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. Now, in modern English, that sounds like a, like an, um, uh, sort of like an oath or a, a a command, um, a requirement to. It it doesn't, it doesn't work in English anymore. By, the word by there is not correct. 
Now, if you look at the New King James, which is updated in language, but the same thing from the same Greek uh, thing as uh, sources as the King James. But now, brethren, concerning, concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the New, the New American Standard, with regard to, it's not variance in the Greek here. This is, this is how do you translate the Greek words? And the King James translation might have worked in 1611, None of people would have understood it properly then, but now they don't. And people don't understand what's really being said. Uh, a lot of these it, these people that are especially fundamentalists and evangelicals of the, uh, the Darby persuasion, the uh, uh, dispensationalists. So it's not talking, he's... he's, he's talking about concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus, that you not be shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of the Lord of Christ had come. Now, these people that are like uh, theonomists, uh, Calvinists in general, are post-millennialists. They believe that Christ came and uh, that, that, that these things were all fulfilled in 70 AD, or a lot of it. Some of it was, but uh, they uh, don't believe in that prophecy is anything to do with anything today. So they're out there, and people like James White are off there in Nana land. But the others, the uh, the dispensationalists with all their charts and exact numbers and everything else, is uh, <clears throat> well, they go too far. It's not. It, it, you take. They take some pieces out of the Bible, and then they arrange the pieces together into their own narrative. It goes back to John Darby and and C. I. Schofield, generally. Uh, <clears throat> no. <laughs> and this is one of these things here uh, that is often misinterpreted, because let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. I've. I've uh, heard be, be people teach that that's the rapture, the falling away upward. No, the word is apostasia. Apostasy is not falling, is falling away from the faith of Jesus Christ. It's not falling away to God in heaven. Since when do you fall upward? Well, maybe in America today. For, for that day, the com that day will not happen until the falling away, the apostasy comes, and the man of sin, the man of sin, the man of lawlessness. There is a Greek variant there, lawlessness, or anomia, or uh, harmatia. But later down, it doesn't really matter. It's a synonym there. The son of, uh, the son of perdition. The son of perdition is a... Uh, Judas was called the son of perdition because he, uh, the son of the perdition is destruction. Who opposes, so this is, this is, uh, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And they've got all these things, the temple in Jerusalem has to be rebuilt, and the Antichrist has to take his seat in that temple and all that. I don't think so. I don't think so. First of all, God's not going to rebuild the temple because he tore it down. We are the temple. The church is the temple, the true church. But the man of sin here, I'm becoming not to completely the, uh, remove the idea that an individual may uh, function as the symbol of it, just as the king functions as a symbol of, the, of a nation, but rather that the man of sin is, is, a, uh, gener is a term, and this is correct in the Greek, is, but it's not exclusively. Uh, it's, it's one of these things that there's ambiguity. It can mean the man as of sin as in human beings that are characterized by sin. The descendants of Adam. Because Adam 
is the fountainhead of sin and death. And all his descendants are of him. They are in Adam. That's why you have to be born again to be in Christ. So this is the uh, the man of sin be revealed. The word there is the same word of apocalypse. The, the unveiling. It's not the, the simple appearance of. It's the revealing. It's there and it's being revealed openly. It's like the tares coming to seed, to, to fruit. And it's they're openly revealed as not being wheat but being weeds. And so I think that certainly it works that way. The people are often, Bible believers are looking for a particular individual when maybe it's not about a particular individual at all. It's about the world, sinful humanity being revealed as what they really are, truly sinful. And certainly you, could, you have to say that about the United States. Even though a majority of the United States, a pretty strong majority, over 60, 65% or so, it's gone down some, say they are Christians and believe in God. And, but yet, a majority of Americans believe, uh, say there's nothing wrong with gay marriage. There's nothing wrong with these things. There's nothing wrong with what God calls an abomination. Well, how can those two be true? You cannot be a Christian and reject what God has said. Unless you're just making up your own religion like the Mormons and call it Christianity, like they do. Mormonism has nothing to do with Christianity. They just steal some Christian words and pretend it's Christianity. But I think that it certainly can be taken correctly in the sense that the revealing, and this is consistent with with the, the the prophecies now we have to remember in the book of revelation you have these visions of beasts and dragons and a lot of things these are prophetic visions so uh these are symbols there's not actually a dragon with seven heads and ten horns that climbs up out of the sea these are have meaning this is spiritual language talking about spiritual realities. And I'm not uh, denying that there might be physical manifestations that are tight, tightly tied with these things, but I think those that forget that these are visions and symbolic things are more apt to err than, than those that... See, I'm, I'm a futurist, generally speaking, too. But how do these things take place? And Jesus in Matthew 24 doesn't really talk about the coming of an Antichrist. I mean, he talks about many Antichrists, many false prophets. So when you take Jesus' words and look at the book of Revelation, it talks about the false prophet and the Antichrist. Are, these, are those things in the visions that John sees symbols of the many antichrists and many false prophets, uh, uh, the, the manifestation of the man of sin, the man of lawlessness. Man, the descendants of Adam in their true, have their, their true wickedness being revealed in preparation for judgment. Yeah, the gathering of the evidence. And that's what we've, we've, we've seen the last few years, especially under Trump, is a revelation of the wickedness that is uh, in Washington, in the Democratic Party, in the country, in the media, uh, in social media. That this Ruth, there, there is no re, the, the restraining one has been removed. So the the revelation, the unveiling of the wickedness of humanity, of sinful humanity, of unregenerate humanity. They're going to be shown for the devils they are. We're all born into that. You must be born again to be delivered from that, that reign of darkness into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. The apostasy, people are falling away. COVID didn't help that either. People that claim to be Christians are just 
you know, a lot of them are, there are actually sacrament, on baptism sacraments out there, so you can get on baptized. Uh, you know, back in, in uh, Israel, after Antiochus Epiphanes, uh, back around 300-ish, under the Macedonian, uh, the, under the Greek empire that controlled uh, Israel, uh, many people uh, that wanted to fit in with the Greek culture, you know, they had gym gymnasiums and all kinds of stuff, forbid the uh, circumcision. They, they actually had surgeries, plastic surgery back then to uncircumcise people. A uh, little bit like gender changing, but not, not for that purpose. Nothing new under the sun. And so uh, it's beyond Jewifying yourself, removing yourself from the covenant of God because the sign of circumcision was the sign of the covenant, the promise of God, which was actually a, a reminder that righteousness comes by faith. Go back and read the beginning of it, of when God gave it to, to, to uh, Abraham. It was to remind Abraham and his descendants of the faith Abraham was re, uh, uh, had the righteousness that Abraham had through faith. Abraham trusted God, believed God, and God counted it to him, count, reckoned that faith to Abraham for righteousness. That's what circumcision is supposed to remind you of. Uh, I think they forgot that someplace. But you could get uncircumcised. And you can get unbaptized today. Wow. And apostasy, I mean, there's uh, the Southern Baptists, they don't have a gospel anymore. See, evangelicals, I can remember when we used to remember, we used to know. We used to believe in the power of God unto salvation. The gospel is the power of God. See, God saves people. We used to know that. It's been forgotten. I don't know if the Southern Baptists ever knew it, though, because they always have programs, a bazillion programs. Oh, we need to save people. We'll have a program. Oh, we need to get him in a church. We, uh, Rick Warren. I see he's retiring. Uh, thank God. This corruption. He's a Southern Baptist. The whole Rick Warren purpose-driven church and the seeker-sensitive Christianity was apostasy. The idea that by attracting unbelievers into a building and get them to say a prayer or get them to be baptized made them Christians is anti-Christianity. It doesn't make you a Christian. Only God can do that. Saying a prayer. Saying a short little silly prayer because you want to, to, to have a better life does not make you a Christian. That's not faith in Christ. So it talks about the man of sin who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or worship. So they, Now think of what's in this culture today is being broadly accepted, maybe a majority accepted. The, the denial of uh, uh, bipolar gender. There, there, I'll put it that way. Uh, that'll confuse the YouTube algorithm. Bipolar gender. That you have males and females. Denial of that. D denial that there should be a, a distinction made between male and female. Denying it. Denying that there's a distinction between right and wrong. That's... That is setting yourself above God. I mean, above the God of creation. Denying creation order. Denying of truth. These people, in this society, in America today, there is an opposition uh, to the authority of God. See, when you're talking about God, you're talking about authority. God has no right to tell me what I should do or what I am. What is that? That's putting yourself above God, denying his authority and exalting yourself. So the, the man of sin or the man of lawlessness, these people, I'll put it as a collective because the Greek could be, it can certainly be interpreted that way, opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. And again, the point here is, is that this is not a particular individual, but a particular kind of people 
the people that are being exposed today is uh, the unregenerate. Uh, exalts about, but all that is called God or is worshipped, so he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Well, think of uh, uh, what's his name out there, Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland believes that God can't do anything unless Kenneth Copeland commands him to do it. See, in, in his in Kenneth Copeland's religion, the the person, the human being that de he decrees what God must do because God is helpless on his own. That man is the little God that God must uh, kowtow to to get God's will done. And Kenneth Copeland has a multitude of followers. In fact, Kenneth Copeland, when the Pope wanted to approach so-called evangelical Christianity in the United States, he went to Kenneth Copeland. Well, birds of a feather flock together. It's not a biblical prop, uh, explicitly biblical proverb, but it's certainly a true proverb. Uh, yeah. The sheep gather with sheep and the goats with goats. I actually saw that when I was down, uh, living down the Mexican border area. One of my neighbors had a small farmette and he had a herd of sheep and goats. And they don't mingle. The sheep stick with the sheep and the goats stick with the goats in the corral. Isn't that interesting? So birds of a feather uh, flock together. It's a, it's a truism. So when the Pope wants to approach a evangelical and he goes to Kenneth Copeland, well, they birds of a feather. Corrupt, carnal, lovers of money. And they want to exalt themselves as God. The Pope, obviously, is uh, that's why historically, from even before the Reformation, the Popes were considered by, by many as Antichrists because they have exalted themselves and they take their seat in the temple of God uh, in, among Christians. The, see, the temple in the New Testament, especially in Paul's writings, is the church or the individual Christian. This is in the context of falling away. In other words, falling away from sub, from the authority and submission and worship of God to, to self-worship, self-exaltation, and self-authority. Autonomous man in the church. The Pope is the head of the church. Or the King of England is head of the church rather than Christ. This is not a new problem, but it's become generalized. When people deny the fact of creation, deny the, the fact of their own gender, you're exalting yourself above God. They, they refuse to accept God as God. I can be whatever I want. doesn't work. But you can deceive yourself. That's, that's a mark of the times. <sighs> Verse 7 here. And you know, or verse 6, and you know what is restraining. Now, this is not, it, we're not told what is the restraining here. And he, that, that he may be revealed in his own time. In other words, God's been holding back the, unveil, the, the wickedness, the unveiling, the wickedness of man, of sinful man, for until a particular time. Uh, for the mystery of lawlessness, that's, that's, uh, Anomia is already at work. In other words, you will not, people that refuse to acknowledge uh, the authority of God at all. I can do whatever I want. No one's going to tell me what to do. It's already at work. Only he uh, who now restrains will do so. Now, in the English translation, I generally use male pronouns here. He. That's an artifact of the Greek. I want to just want to point out that even though it refers to a masculine word, Greek has gender. It's a gendered language, so the he may not be a human individual, is my point. It may be a thing, like law, uh, because law, nomos, is masculine. 
or something else. So it, there, there's there's a vagary here. Uh, and it was just we can't ask Paul, now, what is that? See, we weren't there. So it's uh, then uh, until he or it is taken out of the way. Can't be the Holy Spirit. But, uh, well, this is why they believe the pre-tribulation rapture. Because if the Holy Spirit is restraining, then when the church is removed, the Holy Spirit dwells in believers. But the Holy Spirit is still in creation. And the Holy Spirit, nobody can be saved unless the Holy Spirit convicts them. The Holy Spirit, as far as, is not exclusively in believers. He doesn't indwell others, but he exclusively indwells believers. But he's, he's not required to be in the he has existence separate from us. Uh, so whatever the restraint is, I think it's already been taken away. I think it's not... Re whatever re it's, it was restraining isn't restraining anymore. And you know what is restraining? That he may be revealed in his own time. Now, that he here... The man of sin is also in the Greek a generic, like uh, uh, the we use it in English this type way too in the Bible. The man of righteousness, uh, that is Christ specifically, but it's also those who believe in Christ. It's a kind of person. And the Greek works that way, and it works that way in this passage, or it can be worked. Now, it can be a particular individual, or it could be both. It's like Christ and the man of righteousness. He is the man of righteousness, and those that are in him are man of righteousness, man of righteousness too, because in, in Christ. But Adam is the man of sin too. So, especially in Paul's theology. It's want you to keep these things in mind. Yeah, you say, well, why don't you make it simple? I can't. We're missing a little information here. The Thessalonians knew, but Paul didn't tell us in this letter. So it's being, it was held back until the time came for the, or will come, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, or ahead of God, perhaps, for it to be revealed. But I think the restraining has been taken away uh, in order that humanity might be judged. It's like God sending them a deception, that they might believe a lie. Perhaps the lie is there is no God. A lot of Christians in their heart don't believe in God, or they, they convince themselves they do. But when it comes to choosing between A and B, for some reason, God isn't involved at all. I'm talking about choosing between right and wrong. Or choosing against uh, about what they should do with their lives. God's not really part of that picture. They don't say, well, God, what should I do? What is your will? They don't subject themselves to God. They don't submit to God. The idea is to try to get, if God exists, and get him to do what I want to do. That's Kenneth Copeland, to try to make God do my will. That's called sorcery. I'm not interested in God doing my will. I'm interested in me doing God's will. That takes God. Then the lawless one will be revealed, uh, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy... Uh, with the brightness of his coming. Well, that's the armies of Antichrist in the book of Revelation. Again, that book is, is uh, again, those are visions. So we know Jesus said, we have to go back to Matthew 24 and to his, the, uh, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, or not the Sermon on the Mount, but the, 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 his speaking about his coming. Uh, the forces of, of wickedness will be destroyed. That's not one person. And the coming of the lawless one, the lawless one is in italics because the coming of this one, or this, the coming of, it's not mentioned here, this is an insertion, 
is according with the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Well, what's the working of Satan, particularly? Lies. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, they might be saved. Think of social media today. Think of, of what comes out of Washington today. What comes out of the Ukraine today? What come out, comes out of England today? And, and uh, Reuters and uh, the Wall Street Journal and uh, uh, Facebook and Google, YouTube. They're all lies. It's all narrative. They, they think that reality, there is no reality. That's all in your head. These are, these are existentialists, nihilists, and that you, you just make up a narrative and that's the same as reality. There is no, see, they, they have, like uh, Pontius Pilate, remember Jesus identified himself and, and talked about truth, and Pilate said, what is truth? What is truth? In other words, what, what does truth have, in, what does that mean? You know, they didn't believe in reality, they didn't believe in the reality of truth. That's the world today. It's all narrative. Whatever you spin, well, there's no difference between a lie and the truth. You just put the story out. That's all that's important is getting the story out, getting our narrative out there. All about appearances and stories, and you know, like having uh, the at the public library sponsoring uh, uh, transvestite story hours. And bringing this, these lies, these absolute lies and abominations into the public school, this is state-sponsored, state-financed, state-supported wickedness in the United States and in the West in particular. One of the reasons Putin's hated is because he has turned Russia back from that. See, when Russia was opened with the collapse of uh, uh, the, first of all, the uh, uh, Berlin Wall and then it spread and, and Gorbachev opened it up, the first thing that appeared on the streets of Moscow was pornography. The West poured wickedness into all those areas and began to extract everything they could. Carpetbaggers, people like Biden, Biden's boy. Talk about public corruption. And Biden is still in office. Are there any investigations on that? No. And Congress isn't going to look too deep because they all got their fingers in there. It's all part of the system. It's been there so long, it doesn't exist without it. You'd have to clean everything out. going to take the return of Christ. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. See, that's before the coming of the Lord Jesus. God is giving them the opportunity to, to do what they want, taking the leash off. And the sons of Adam that have not been born again are just gone nuts. They're like Israel. When, when, uh, I remember when Moses went up on the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments? He was up there for 40 days. And what happened? The people... Israel is supposed to be the people of God who had been delivered from Egypt, who had saw all the miracles, who had seen the, 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 the cloud by day and the fire by night, and who had eaten of the manna. What did they do? Ah, uh, let's go back to Egypt. This Moses must be dead, and God isn't helping us. And so they forgot God. And what do they do? They, they cast off restraint, the Bible says. And began to go wild. 
just indulge in sinful, indulge the flesh in all its wicked desires, unrestrained. And then Moses came back down. You suppose that might be a picture of Christ's return? What was the question Moses asked? Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come to me. What happened with the rest? God destroyed them. The earth opened, you know, they, they were cast out. Because they had rejected God. They had seen, they heard, just like the world today. The gospel has gone out into all the world, into all nations. They have, there is not ignorance. You can, even in communist China, on your phone, you can read the Bible. The, 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 the knowledge of what, of the claims of Christ is out there, everywhere. And what are people doing? Like the United States. United States, every Walmart sells Bibles. All these, you can buy them dirt cheap. I bought one the other day to put on the shelf in case somebody needs it. A giant print, New King James Bible. It was like, uh, it wasn't leather bound or anything, but it not bad quality. It's like 12 bucks. 12 bucks. What's that? A pack of cigarettes? Two packs of cigarettes? A gallon of gas? Uh, less than three gallons of gas today, that's for sure. It's everywhere. The people don't care. They don't want to know what God says. They're hiding from God. They're running from God. They, they, they want the lies. They love the lies. They spend all their time listening to lies, and they love them because they, they want to forget God, because they want to be God. They want to do what they want to do, and they don't want to be bothered with God. And that's where we are. And judgment's coming. You know, God put enough resources on this planet to get to this point. There's enough oil. We haven't run out of oil yet. You know, we've got 8 billion people on the planet today. At least according to estimates, because nobody can count them all. Think about that. But, say, 50, 60 years natural progression would tell you that there'd be, or even less possibly, there'd be 16 billion. Uh-uh. The earth as it is today cannot support that. We've run in, we're bumping up against the limits. The earth is full. In the beginning, God told Adam and Eve to, to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. That has been done. We have to protect places to keep them from utter, be, all being tore up and farmed and everything else. The, the, almost all the good, productive, accessible land is already in use. And decreasing. <laughs> but there's enough now. But there won't be in another generation. Technology is not the answer. It's part of the problem. Humanity has, has, has lost their mind, and we've got people like like Gates and uh, Zuckerberg and others. Like Zuckerberg with uh, Facebook is not going to be meta, a virtual reality world. You're going to live in virtual reality. The Matrix. These people are nuts. Elon Musk wants to make a race of robots, and he wants to to put a internet connection in your brain. He's not the only one. And he wants to establish a colony on Mars. Mars was not made for a human con uh, in hab habitation. These people are nuts. They're given over to reprobate minds. They might be brilliant, but they're brilliant nuts. Idiot savants. And they're on the way to hell because they will not bend their knees to Jesus Christ. They're not interested in God's purpose and God's will. 
They're interested in accomplishing what they want to do and force everybody else to join them. That's where we are. So you're either with the with the man of sin, Adam, or you're with the man of righteousness, Jesus Christ. Pick your side. Because Christ is coming. And he's coming soon. 